this is like the sister-in-law relationship focused drama. Depending on what kind of audiences you are, if you are a huge domestic conflict thing digger, you probably will like this drama. Hello, you're watching Avenue X, where Junkie and Good Storytelling shares her thoughts, knowledge, and occasional weird ideas on stories and how they're told. Xinju, Life is a Long Quiet River is a 35 episode drama that's being aired on web, iQiyi, and two different satellite televisions at the same time in China. The drama is led by Hai Qing, Tong Yao, Zhang Songwen, Feng Shaofeng. It's directed by Teng Hua Tao and written by Teng Xiaolan, who is both the writer of the original novel with the same title that the drama is based on and the drama script itself. This is a collaboration production of a lot of different production companies. Also, the platform iQiyi and Tencent, it only airs on iQiyi. So on the back end, there probably is some kind of deal that they decided to do. The drama is fully set in the big metropolis city Shanghai and it started shooting last year, April, wrapped in August. At this point, I've watched the first 12 episodes. I'll give it a between one and two gold mine rating as of now. And now let me introduce you roughly to the story and then as usual, positive, negative points. This is a domestic life drama set in current Shanghai. Like many other drama we've seen this year and also last year, Modern Marriage, I've talked about recently, A Little Mood for Love earlier this year, even last year's couple of Shanghai setting dramas, it's very, very similar. The story itself focuses on two female lead characters played by Hai Qing and Tong Yao and their sister-in-law. Tong Yao comes from the Shanghai local family, who is, as the story starts, very successful. Higher management of a venture capital company. Somehow, you know, dramas cluster together and they all have the main roles doing the same kind of job. She does very well, earns a lot of money, Korea woman, and then she has a twin brother who is much less useful okay, and successful in career. And his wife is played by Hai Qing. Hai Qing is Tong Yao's sister-in-law and she comes from a less well-doing and smaller city. And their relationship as the story develops becomes the sort of core relationship of this drama, starting from a place where they don't really have the best opinion of each other to later they collaborate and become each other's strong support. So this is like the sister-in-law relationship focused drama, although it also touches on many, many, many other supporting roles in their family, such as the parents' generation, even the grandmother's generation, the uncles and aunts, the cousins, the younger generation, all the peripheral people who are related to them gets pulled into this narrative. And then Zhang Songwen plays the successful investor in property who got filthy rich <laughs> due to his early life correct decision of buying properties. His head over here over Tong Yao's row, but then Tong Yao literally just doesn't look at him in any of those romantic ways. So the archetypical Tian Gou and Bei Tai. Then Feng Shaofeng plays the guest star main role, who is Tong Yao's Rose childhood sweetheart. Later, their relationship between these four people are gonna get really jumbled up and weird, okay? Judging from the trailer. Now, let's talk about what's great about this drama and what's not so ideal. On the positive end, number one, like pretty much every contemporary drama I've seen this year, very good standard of production quality, so I'm not gonna stress on that anymore. I pretty much say that for every contemporary drama I've reviewed this year. And they're all proper, professional, real actors, no traffic involved, all real voice, pretty much on-set recording, no skin smoothing, no idealizing and over-beautifying of things. Point number two, the casting. If you like Hai Qing, Zhang Songwen, Tong Yao, and Feng Shaofeng, all of them or any of them, this drama probably is gonna make you very happy. Even the supporting roles who plays the older generation, younger generation, they're all very good. I would further divide them into a tier one and tier two. I would say Hai Qing and Zhang Songwen are the stronger actors. So they are the tier one actor and then Tong Yao and Feng Shaofeng are the tier two, but they all do a good enough job. When you watch the story, it's very easy to just go with it. And then Hai Qing really is a master of playing this particular type of contemporary woman role. She's the type of actress that, you know, would never hear her name. You know, it's gonna be a contemporary domestic life drama and she's gonna be great. 
however the script is written, whatever the setup of the role, it's like her niche and she's known for that. And honestly, if it wasn't for her playing the leading female role, it would not be the same drama. Then the third positive thing is as a domestic drama that focuses on very much relationship between family members and conflicts that you come across living the life in Shanghai. Child's education, property buying, the dynamic between a family where the more successful child and the less successful child and how they have power over each other, you know, how it works with the parents and the grandparents, all that, you're gonna get it in this drama. And if you dig it, it's pretty satisfying. It doesn't drag, it really get down to businesses and for the first couple of episodes, certain things happen really fast. Faster than I expected. And it very quickly cut into the main theme and the main relationship we're gonna see getting unfolded in the 35 episodes. It's the type of drama for a typical Chinese family that's possible and highly likely to be turned on on television around 8 p.m a night to nine where you have the younger generation, the parents generation, even the grandparents generation sitting in the same living room and being able to all watch it and not feel that they need to jump to another program. <laughs> so very typically um, the golden time slot television drama drama. And then on the not so ideal side of things, number one is very personally, okay, if you are a fan of hers, I apologize <laughs> in advance, which is I don't quite buy into Tong Yao's performance. I'm not saying she's a bad actress. Compared to a lot of, let's say, traffic idol actresses, she's a proper actress. The baseline of her performance is better than a lot of, I wouldn't call qualified as proper actress, actress. But then when you want to compare her with other really professional, proper and well-established actresses, she immediately falls short. In this drama, whenever there's a strong conflict showdown level of scene between her and Hai Qing's role, wow, <laughs> immediately she gets flattened and trampled by the other side's strong acting. So that difference and gap only comes through comparison. And if she's not compared to a much stronger actress, then she is watchable. In recent years, I've noticed she tends to just do the same kind of acting for every drama she's in. And it's very hard for you to tell if her different characters has different designs and different vibes. Also, I noticed uh, she tends to cover her face whenever it's a super emotional scene where she's supposed to cry. She just does this. She did it in Rebel. She did it in this drama in a couple of very emotional scenes. And Maybe it's her bad habit, or maybe it's just like she doesn't have enough tears and she just hides it in that way. I, I can't tell. I'd rather see her face instead of covering it up all the time. And it's just a couple of things I've noticed of her acting that I'm not a big fan of, but it doesn't affect too much of my enjoyment of this drama. I basically just fast forward through some of her acting parts. There's very little details of her acting. So even when you spit it up, you really don't miss anything. Also, maybe just because personally, I, I just I just don't feel it's fair that for the recent very heavyweight Chinese um, television award, The White Magnolia, it's not Rui Yijia who got the best actress, but her. And I don't think it's fair. And I'll always stand for what I say for that is I think for last year's dramas, it should be Rui Yijia, okay, not her. So maybe, maybe, I just have that and, and I have a little bit prejudice against Tong Yao, okay? In that respect. Then the second thing about this drama is, depending on what kind of audiences you are, if you are a huge domestic conflict thing digger, you probably will like this drama. If you are more conflict avoiding and do not want to raise your blood pressure over this type of things, like me, this drama may be the type of drama where once you turn on one episode, you can pretty safely watch till the end and not really feel the need to quit. But then once you shut it down, next day when new episodes come, whether you have enough urge or sort of mental readiness to click open another episode knowing you're gonna head into another conflict heavy domestic difficulty rising <laughs> plot whether you'd rather have something else so for me while watching this drama if i already had it on i can enjoy it pretty much but then 
it's the convincing that I have to do on myself to actually open a new episode. So for me, there's the difficulty of watching this drama. Is I need that convincing. I need to take that leap and kind of force myself to do things I don't quite want to do, so that I can、uh, watch the new updates. I'm not sure. Even with really good acting from Zhang Songwen and Hai Qing, I'd be able to sit through this entire thing. I wouldn't give up along the way. One day I was like, yeah, I don't need. <laughs> my blood pressure to go up over these things today, and then I drop it. And then once you drop it, you don't want to go back to it. If you are like me, who for some reason just don't quite want to watch that much domestic conflict thing,、um, then this drama may not be the best choice for you. So that's pretty much my first impression on this drama, Xinju. Life is a long, quiet river, <laughs> where、uh, really this drama is not very long, and then it's definitely not quiet. <laughs> You're gonna see a lot of pretty mellow plot happening, although not to the point where it gets ridiculous like that drama. That should be the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I'm Nimax. I'll see you in my next video. Meanwhile, live long and happy drama watching.